what I need. Sure, sure. I got it right here. And, and it, it's, the, it's the real deal, right? Hey, I only sell 100% pure. <sighs> Here we are, March 26, 2014, and Halo Escalation Issue 4 is finally out. I don't know about you, but it certainly felt like a longer wait than the last couple issues, but given that Issue 4 never had an online preview, I'm probably not alone. It's sad to say that not a whole lot happens in this issue overall, but it's still a good read. We start off in the middle of a battle for some reason, then flashback 74 hours earlier. Right away, the keen comic book reader might notice a little discrepancy. The final page of issue 3 apparently takes place one week after the events of Elon 4, which would put it around March 12th. However, issue 4 starts on March 8th, apparently picking up with the same conversation that Hood and Lasky were having in the previous issue. I'm a stickler for details, so maybe it's just an issue for me. Moving forward, Hood and Lasky are discussing a way to discover the traitor in the UNSC, who I'm still assuming is the elusive Admiral Drake. To do so, Lasky is meeting up with an old friend, Petra Janicic, with Spartan Naya Ray accompanying him. That's right, Spartan Ray's first name is Naya. And one of my favorite things about this scene is seeing Spartan Ray in civilian clothing. One of my favorite aspects of Halo Reach was seeing civilians for the first time. It really helps ground the Halo universe, making it seem more real. Lasky arranges to meet Petra on an outer colony, Escala 3, yet another planet that seems to have gone untouched by the Human Covenant War. Now, I want to stop here and address a small issue I have. All these colonies that apparently went untouched, and more that have so quickly been recolonized. It's nothing too major, but it seems odd that so many colonies have remained intact, considering how often we heard about the devastation and obliteration of colonies during the Human Covenant War. Maybe I'm just being picky, but when you look at the Halopedia page about human colonies, there are something like 17 colonies that are fine A-OK -okay out of the almost 100 listed colonies, not including Earth and the Soul System. That's almost 20% of the listed colonies. Still, if the information from the old Halo story page on the ancient Xbox.com is to be believed, there were over 800 colonies at one point, which makes the 17 surviving slash recolonized colonies, equaling less than 0.02% by the way, a bit more believable. I guess I just wish that 343 would stick with the established locations rather than constantly making up new ones. In the end, I wager I'm just being picky. As Lasky and Ray set out on their mission, Hood wants to see, firsthand, what the Infinity is capable of. He gives Roland control and after some funny lines from Roland, is ready to put Infinity to the test, before a random distress signal catches their attention. It's kind of funny how Infinity keeps stumbling upon random distress signals, isn't it? Upon investigation, they find an old freighter, Pilgrim's Pride, and find it in pretty bad shape. As they tow it in for aid and rescue, the ship deploys small fighters, and worse, it looks like the engine is going to blow. Spartan teams Colossus, Fenrir, and Majestic, the latter now being led by Thorn, are deployed to get the ship away from Infinity and hopefully stop this self-destruct sequence. Thankfully, the freighter is cleared from Infinity in time, and the ship's core is ejected. The remaining fighters, mostly Sparrowhawks and Vultures, Sparrowhawks and Vultures retreat. On Escala 3, we finally get to see Petra for the first time. Wait a, wait a minute. Is, is that Shell? Holy shit, it's Shell from Portal! When did we get into a cross- Wait, 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 wait. I'm being told that that is in fact Petra and that I am a complete dumb- Hey! So after meeting up, Lasky, Ray, and Petra all sit down to talk. We get a little backstory about how Lasky and Petra grew up on Mars together and I I'm sorry, I have to interrupt again. This is something that's been bothering me since the Halo 4 Essential Visual Guide came out. Apparently Lasky was born on Mars, but also grew up on New Harmony. Cue Halo 4 clip. I grew up on New Harmony. Attended Corbulo Military Academy. Never saw Earth in person until I was an adult, but... I still think of her as home. So, I really just want to know, what is Lasky's personal timeline? We know he was bored on Mars, so did he move to New Harmony after and then return to Mars sometime after the attack on Corbulo Academy? That would be my guess, considering Lasky said he and Petra were friends before she, quote, decided to become a planet-hopping journalist. 
Anyway, Lasky dismisses Ray to avoid implicating her and talks business with Petra. He details the incident in Elan 4 and asks Petra if she can flush out the traitor. Petra agrees, so long as she can talk to none other than Master, Master Chief, Chief Petty, Petty Officer, Officer Spartan, Spartan John, John 117. 117. While nothing is concrete, we may get a cameo from the Chief himself in the coming issues. The comic comes to a close with Hood talking to Commander Bailey and some after-action teams regarding the Pilgrim's Pride. It turns out, and I'm betting most of you have already guessed this, that the Sparrowhawks and the Vultures that were deployed from the freighter were in fact from the long-missing UNSC Spirit of Fire. The final lines in the issue are from Hood, who says, I know all there is to know about the Spirit of Fire. I'm the reason they went missing. Gore Rabbit Slurf, what a cliff to leave us hanging on. Well, the next issue should feature the legendary ship more directly, we'll hopefully discover what Hood means when he says he's the reason for their disappearance. Could he have been the one who declared the ship lost with all hands instead of MIA? Could there be something more devious at play? Sadly, we'll have to wait another month. Overall, the issue was a fun read. We found out why DeMarco was reassigned to Spartan Team Bailey, basically so Thor could lead Majestic, finally saw Petra, learned Spartan Ray's first name, and so much more. Still, the comic is not without fault. I've already taken issue with Escalation's art, but it seems that Dark Horse is hell-bent on annoying me. Issue 4 marks the introduction of a new artist, Ricardo Sanchez, and I can't say I'm happy with that change. The characters look worse than before. Hood used to look too thin, now he looks like he's suddenly gained 50 pounds. I barely recognized Thor when I first saw him, and I don't even know what this is supposed to be an expression of. Nonetheless, the story pulls you in and keeps you distracted, which speaks volumes about Schlurf's writing abilities. It really saddens me to think that we only have two more issues before he leaves Halo for good, with Halo lead writer Brian Reed taking over. I really worry about what could happen to the characters in Reed's hands, considering his work in Spartan Ops and Initiation. Still, he did give us Spartan Thorn, so... That's something, right? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. This has been Halo Cannon. See you next time, Spartans.